Does this voice sound familiar to you at all? In a world. In a world. In a world. In a world. For decades, with a massive peak in the mid 90s, this voice was heard in nearly every single trailer. But then it slowly disappeared, and you'd be hard pressed to find a movie trailer with this voice in it today. So, what happened? First, we need to find out exactly why this trailer voice was used so much in the first place. And the answer to that is pretty simple. The trailer voice was the easiest way to convey and set up your story for the movie. Let's take this Dumb and Dumber trailer for example. If they each had half a brain, they'd still only have half a brain. Instead of having the audience watch and assume that both Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels are incredibly dumb characters, they can just tell you, and in 30 seconds you understand what the movie is about. And this way of making a trailer may seem like it treats the audience like they're stupid, but it definitely worked. Multiple massive blockbusters that were the largest movies of their times have the movie trailer voice to partially thank for their success. If seen today, the movie trailer voice is either used in animated films or for the sake of comedy. So why did it suddenly disappear? Well, a number of reasons are attached to this. One of the main ones being that this style of trailer was way too oversaturated. You just couldn't get away from this. In the year 2002, when the out of this world gets out of control. So audiences started to get sick of it to the point where it's reduced to almost parody at this point. In a world where laughter was king. Uh, no in a world, Jack. But not only was it being overused, but this shift in trailer styles has a lot more to do than just an overused voice. They're completely eventized, with companies like Disney and Warner Brothers even going so far as to put out a 20 second teaser for their two minute trailer that gets released two days later. They rack up millions of views on YouTube, and they even force people to watch football and basketball games. They're watched and analyzed dozens of times with entire communities dedicated to picking apart these trailers frame by frame. And due to all this hype and eventizing over trailers, as well as the ability to watch them over and over again, trailers don't have to be so simple. The very first trailer showcased the spectacle of going to the movies, bragging about the stunts and special effects, and if you were a really big star, maybe they'd mention you. Today, trailers are almost a story all by themselves, with characters' dialogue being cut together and even the trailer having scenes that don't end up in the final movie. And instead of there being one single trailer that would air before a movie at the theater for several months prior to that film's release date, Studios might now release a dozen trailers of different clips and scenes. Because of all these reasons and the fact that we can rewatch trailers as much as we want, it gives studios more wiggle room to how they present their trailers. It doesn't have to be as cut and dry as a narrator telling you the plot of the movie in under 90 seconds. Studios aren't as worried about getting their ideas across because you have the internet and 10 other trailers that'll come out that will eventually explain what the movie is actually about. And movie trailers have so much more in them nowadays as well. According to a Wired study, trailers in the 1950s had roughly 12 cuts per minute, and since the 1990s, the amount of cuts every minute has risen to 38. Now although this can be attributed to the fact that editing is much easier than it was back then, but it's still no secret that movie trailers are shoving in much more info to people than ever. Even if that info isn't done with a narrator, but through visuals. So although trailers have changed dramatically over time, they still always have the same purpose, and that's to get you out to the movies.